Hello, this is Katherine Cheltman and I'm from the Resume Place in Baltimore, Maryland. This is a 30-minute webinar all about applying for a federal position using USA Jobs. And I'm going to be using um, my book, Federal Resume Guidebook, as to use to show you samples for the resume builder in USA Jobs. And uh, this is the cover of the book, Sato Resume Guidebook, and the reason that I was inspired to teach this webinar um, on USA Jobs is that, you know, here at the Resume Place, we help people with their federal resumes, and people send us their resumes all the time to review. And the resumes that I get are completely wrong. They are too short or too long or functional or something is wrong with them, and they just won't work for a federal job. So that's what that's what the topic is going to be here is how to use USA Jobs and write the most correct federal resume format. So starting here with USA Jobs first, I'm I'm not using PowerPoints. I'm just going to do live lessons. Uh, one thing I was teaching a class yesterday at the Smithsonian, and everybody in the class, 20 of them never use the same searches for looking for a job. And I asked the group, I said, how many of you would really like to get promoted or get a new position using your skills? And everybody in the room raised their hand, 20 people. And I said, how many of you have a save search for the next job for you in your career? Two people raised their hand out of 20. It's crazy. You, you need to set up save searches for the job title that you're looking for. So. I'm going to say, set up a save search right now. So create a save search. So I'm going to just uh, put uh, logistics management specialist. And we're going to do a location. We'll do uh, Norfolk, Virginia. I'll pretend like I want to live there. And then I'm going to do the salary or the pay. And I'm going to do the pay grade of a GS um, 9 to 12. So my parameters are <clears throat> logistics, 9 to 12, Norfolk, and I'm going to do federal employee. So I'm going to call it logistics, 9 to 12, Norfolk, um, fed employee. And then I'm going to change it to daily. And then I'm going to do save and view results. Whoa, there's one job. Now, see, if you had your resume in your builder ready to go, you could literally apply for this job. So, wow, that's good. And I think I'll save this job so I don't forget it. Okay, I've saved it. Saved it. So, okay, I love saving jobs. So you don't have to look at look for it each time. And this one is open to status people, which would include veterans who are part of the uh, BEOA, 30% or more disabled people. So this is open. This is a job that would be of interest to my client. And it came up. It just popped up, you know. And the keywords are right here. So let's go back and set up another one now. So my account, save searches. Okay, create another search. Now I'm going to do another one for, let's do um, supply specialist. Let's do admin, administrative. I'm just going to use the word. Okay, pay grade, we're going to do seven to nine. Now all of you know where my question box is. I would like you to write in there and tell me if you Oh, somebody says they can't hear me. Let me know if you can hear me again. Can you hear me? Everybody speaking? Anybody? Noel says he can't hear me. Gabriella can. Okay, everybody can. All right, everybody else can. All right. So what I want you to tell me in this box there is do you have saved searches set up in your USA Jobs account? Yes or no? Do you have saved searches in your account? Yes or no? Location, let's do um, let's do Baltimore, Maryland. No, yes, 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 no, no, yes. Yes, no, no, yes. I don't know, we might be about one half. 
Chris says, no, I don't, but I will now. <laughs> you better. <laughs> Good. Okay. Both audio, you can hear me. Okay. All right. Baltimore, Maryland, 7 and 9, admin. Okay. This time we're going to do the no button, and that's the U.S. citizen button. So here we're going to have U.S. citizen, admin, 9 to, no, 7 to 9. Uh, Baltimore. That's my parameters. And click on daily, save search. But now I want to view the results of my admin search, re view results. 27 jobs. Wow. That's pretty good. So you would get an email for 27 jobs. <laughs> Look out for your email. But if you're a serious job applicant and you know what job you're going for, then, you know, you need to do this. You can't not do this. It's awesome. Now, you'd have to screen out a bunch of them. I mean, if you aren't, if you don't want to join the military, Title 32, you don't want to apply to any of those because Title 32 requires that you join the Guard. See, that one says military requirement, and this one, this one doesn't. But Title 32 means military requirement. Look, here's a part-time job. I never heard of a part-time job. Oh, you know what? This Baltimore didn't work. Look, I got Buchanan, West Virginia. Come on. Let's do this again. Okay, save search. Edit. Location. Yeah, Baltimore, Maryland. Fix it. Let's do it again. Save search and view. Ah. <laughs> okay, there's no admin jobs in Baltimore right now. All right, that's fine. You know, we're you can edit this easily. So I think that's kind of cool to know how to do that and also to save your jobs. So if I go back now to my save jobs, uh, there's my logistics job. I don't want to forget this. It closes on 120. So if I want to view it, here it is. And look at the duties and apply for it and everything. So while I'm here, I think I'll just apply for this job. So I'm just going to go ahead. There's my five resumes that I have in my builder, and I have names for all of them, you know, really specifically. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on this one just for the heck of it. And I'm not going to do any um, attachments. And let's preview the resume. I don't know what it looks like. Let's look at it. Oh, it's not that bad. This is the format that I want you to have in your builder and this is why I'm teaching the class by the way I'm teaching this class number one because I want you to use the builder this builder resume is pretty good looking don't you think I know it's I like it a lot I got a couple questions here one from Gabriella she says how can you tell if a job is being being kept for someone I ask because sometimes if the job is posted for too short of a time that indicates there's an internal candidate any other tips you have about that system? Gabriella, you're not going to like what I have to say. But the, the truth is, you can't ever know when a job is wired for somebody. And by the dates, you cannot tell. Because the HR people are making the dates shorter and shorter, like as little as two days, because they don't want to receive 500 resumes. They only want to receive like 100 or 50. So they're cutting down the open dates big time now. You're not very rarely do you see a two week unless it's a very unique specialized job. So telling whether that position is wired by dates is not right. You you know if you see a job for which you're qualified and you like the job and where it is the salary you should apply for it. You cannot worry about who might be sitting there waiting for this position. Once you do a good resume like I'm going to show you here in this webinar and you get it in the builder and you apply for it, it won't take you that long. So you just need to do it and not think about jobs that are out there for somebody else because you just can't tell. Uh, Noah says, it seems that you inserted Baltimore, but your results gave you things in Mississippi. Yeah, it didn't pick up Baltimore, so I went back and I fixed it because it didn't pick up Baltimore. And there are no admin jobs in Baltimore right now. So here's my preview, and the resume is beautiful, so I'm good. I'm going to close this now. And I did preview my resume, and I do certify that everything is true. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply for this job now. 
So, you know, that was not hard for me to apply for this job, right? Because the resume was all ready to go. And, um, you know, I just I said I'm going to do it. Uh, let's see. You must correct the following errors before proceeding. I have to enter one pair of start and end date. Okay. But I'm not, I'm going to say I'm not a veteran. Oh, I must have said I'm a veteran somewhere else. Okay, I'll just say, yeah, that's, no, that's, that's bad. Wait a minute. I'll just do this. Okay. In my previous application, welcome back, Catherine. Apply to this job. Okay. Preference eligible? No. Look, it picked up a lot of, it auto-populated because I applied for a job here before. So I don't have to do these questions because I already did them once before for Coast Guard. So a lot of times when you do these profiles in the uh, secondary application, you won't have to answer all these questions again, which is a real gift. These are all uh, personnel questions that I already answered. So I'm, luckily I get to go, I want to get over to the um, job-related questions. I picked a good one, didn't I? All that was already done. That was by luck. Okay, next. Okay, job related. Logistics management. <clears throat> Do I wish to be considered for the 11? Yes, please. Do I want to be in Norfolk? Yes. Next. Okay. Now, you have to answer one of these, and you got to decide which one is the best. I have one year specialized experience in this work at the level of the nine, or I have three years graduate school or I have a PhD. Nope. I have a combination of graduate school and specialized experience. No, I don't have the graduate school. And obviously the last one is terrible. That, that'll that screen you right out and it's done. Okay, number one is good for me. Uh, it has to be supported. Do you see this note here? The response and the basic qualification has to be in the resume. Okay, next. Now these are the self-assessment questions and you are going to choose what is right for you. And um, so number one, which statement best describes my highest level experience monitoring logistics requirements for shipbuilding acquisition? Oh, shipbuilding. Well, so I'm just going to say I have supervised this or I have trained other people or I'm normally consulted because I have done shipbuilding acquisition before and I have monitored logistics requirements for shipbuilding. Now, if I have not done shipbuilding, if I have done logistics requirements for something else, like airplanes or helicopters or anything else, chances are this is a problem because this job is about shipbuilding. But you can you can check off um, you know one of the other numbers, but this one is very specific about shipbuilding. So the goal with the questionnaire is to answer the questions at the highest level as you can. And you may or may not know this, and you can write in the box here. Here's the question. Did you know that the self-assessment questionnaire, which we have right here, you have to score yourself a score of 90 to get best qualified? Did you know? Yes or no? You have to get a score of 90 to get best qualified. No, yes, yes, no, yes, yes from me, yep, no, yes, knew about the scoring, yes, a lot of people you know, no, but I knew it had to be high, yes, 90. So the questionnaire is a screen out, and it, they look at the uh, questionnaire before they ever look at the resume, so if you have to score yourself kind of bad on the questionnaire, and the score is going to be less than 90, you're in trouble. You can apply for it and just see how it goes and wait and see what happens with your application, but chances are you're not going to get best qualified. So here's what happens then. So then you go back over to your account and try to figure out what happened. You knew you didn't score yourself that great, and that's kind of sad, but here's the one I was just applying for right then. It's not closed yet, so it's still sitting there. So let's look at this one. Um, we'll look at the Air Force job. Contracting specialist, the GS5 to 15. Um, I clicked on the wrong thing. 
Okay, here. Look, you have to click on more information, not that, right? Right here, more information. Take me to wherever you want. I accept and proceed. Okay, they didn't tell me what happened. So I got an acknowledgement letter here, but nothing else. It closed on January 31. Oh, that's why. Doesn't close till January 31. There's no score on that one yet. Wait a minute. Let me go back. Let me find another one. Okay, here's the next question for you all. Are you ready? How this is yes or no. How many of you have have checked your status on your applications in application status? Yes or no? Yes, you have checked your status? No, you have never checked your status. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, good. Yes. Perfect. You know a lot of people don't know you can do this. Oh, Chris hasn't applied yet, but he will. So now you know how to do it. Um, let's look at this one. This one closed. Look, I clicked the wrong button again. Oh, man. More, you got to click on the more information button. Oh, my application was incomplete. I saw that already. See that? It says application was incomplete. I'm not going to look at that. I want to show you a result. This is my second set of screens. Okay, more information on this one. Navy Lakehurst. Take me there. Accept and proceed. And, oh, I got a notification letter. Uh-oh. What does it say? IAOC. That's bad. I was found ineligible because I was not within the area of consideration. Well, whatever I did, it was wrong. So IAOC means you didn't do something right or I picked out an announcement that was wrong for me. So you'll see all kinds of messages like that. And I think it's kind of amazing that USA Jobs, the HR people do put up results. And you can see what happened to your applications. I have people write to me here at the resume place and tell me that, um, you know, I haven't heard a word in a year. And I say, well, no. You, you know, if you if you sign up, like Brad did, sign up for notifications for status reports to get sent to you, you can get reports. So now let me show you the resume. This is really important. No, I think I'll show you the resume over here first. Okay, here's the book. This book is really not out yet. It's coming out um, in a month. So use the outline format. And these are four resumes that a federal resume is not. It's not a private sector resume. It's too short. It's not a functional resume because it's terrible. It's not a big block resume because that's also terrible and bulleted is too short. So here we go. That's the ultimate federal resume right there. I call it the outline format. I created it myself in around 2000. It is easy to read. The all cap words are keywords from the announcement. The HR people love it, and then after you do the duties up here, you do an accomplishment. So let me show you a before. Here's a TSA screener. This is a big block resume that is not popular, obviously, because it's horrible to read. And the, remember again, HR specialists and government read resumes from USA Jobs and Automated Systems is not. Yes, you can pre-order the new book. Yes, I'll tell you how. I'll say I'll tell you in a second. Um, okay, that's bad. Terrible. Okay, here's another bad resume. These are long lists of bullets. Everybody in my class yesterday had bullet resumes. This is terrible. You can't read this. You can't see the skills, keywords, accomplishments. It's, it is totally a laundry list, and it's awful. Here is the ultimate resume right here. It is a narrative style. It is an active voice. It has small paragraphs. It uses all cap keywords from the announcement and includes accomplishments. And it is not too short. This is what everybody's resume should look like. Everybody, even from my people yesterday, building service workers, all the way to GS15 because it's easy to read. I'll show you one more. Here's another really horrible resume. You know why. It's impossible. It makes my eyes hurt. And then, of course, this is the laundry list, which is, you know, not good for federal. And this is the after. This particular resume 
is a resume that this client wrote from my fifth edition book. And he sent out one resume, Department of Justice in Chicago for litigation assistance something. One resume, and then I coached him on the interview, and he got hired. <laughs> this resume here. One resume. Oh, my gosh. He had some good stories from the interview, too. And uh, he called me after the interview and after my coaching session, and he said that the lawyers were talking about his interview stories and what he said and how much they liked him. I mean, he actually had water cooler stories that were so cool. So that is the ultimate resume there. So now let me go over back over to USA Jobs and show you what it really looks in the builder because you might not believe me. I showed you one already, but here we go. Here's what I did yesterday in my class, maintenance worker. Well, no, there was another one. So here it is. See in the builder, doesn't it look good? See, a lot of people don't use the builder. Yesterday in my class, I asked how many people had their resume in the builder. Oh, let me ask you that question. Okay, all of you, here's the question. You need to write in the question box, do you have your resume in the builder or do you have it as an upload? Builder, type the word builder or upload. Builder, 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 upload, builder, 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 upload, 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 builder, upload, builder, builder. Well, I think we got 50-50. That's not too bad. My class yesterday, two people had Builder, maybe one. Everybody else was Upload. And their resumes were one page. They thought resumes should be one page. Oh, man, I'm glad I'm there helping them, those poor people. So here we are, this beautiful resume. Let me show you another one. So I have five resumes in here. Here's my MSW sample. This is what I created yesterday in the class at Smithsonian. I was helping the building workers, and we came up with these keywords here from the vacancy announcement. And I just typed the keywords in here so that they would have a good, you know, starting point to write their resumes. Maintain facilities, ability to interpret instructions, building cleaning tasks, labor, notifying instructor of apparent defects, moving, arranging equipment, and using. Um, self-propellered equipment for all that cleaning stuff they do. And this is an accomplishment right here where all the men's rooms, urinals, where water was coming out of all at noontime at the American Indian Museum. I hear good stories. That was a good one. He fixed it. He fixed it in about 20 minutes. And the museum never had to close, nothing. So here we go. Let me show you what it looks like final. There's one from Navy. So there, this is this is why I'm teaching this class right now, right this minute. I'm trying to convince you that the builder resume is the best because it's structured and it includes the name of the place, the street address, and the location, and month and year, hours per week, and your supervisor's name and all that. <coughs> and these are all from my classes. There's one down here that's finalized. This is from Lakehurst. Every class I teach is what I'm teaching, the outline format, all cap keywords, in the builder. Do you think it's a good idea to put it in the builder? Don't you think it looks good? Say yes or no. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a <laughs> loaded question, right? Oh, well. Um, Gabriella says, what if you have some jobs that are not relevant? Well, if they're really short periods of time, you leave them out. That's what you do. You leave them out. Because HR people want to see recent and relevant missions. Yesterday I had a guy in the room who was, um, he was doing maintenance. And uh, he once, you know, a couple jobs back, owned a couple of businesses. But he, um, so we decided two of his jobs he would leave out. Because they were short time while he was, uh, yeah, less than a year, and they weren't relevant. And the HR people don't care about a little bit of breaks in service. They only want to see what's relevant and recent for them. When I look at a military spouse's resume, sometimes I see as many as like 18 jobs in the resume. Oh, that is so too much for HR. So I go through it, and I'll take out five or six, or it's just gone. They're gone. We want to keep the most solid blocks of time in the resume so that HR can find one year specialized experience in the in the resume blocks. How recent? Recent is ten years. Recent is five years. 
okay, Euron has his resume in the builder and needs to know what's wrong. Well, I don't know. You probably don't have the outline format. You probably don't have your keywords standing out. You probably didn't write, you know, you can put 5,000 characters in the builder. You probably made it too short. Keywords probably don't match the announcement. You don't probably don't have any accomplishments in there. So all kinds of things can be wrong, even if you are using the builder. Jessica says here, uh, uh, the job I'm applying for wants a statement of interest. Oh, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Uh, I, no, that's not in the builder. It would be a separate document, or it would be in the additional information field. You could upload it uh, in the builder if you want. Let me show you where you can put it. So let's edit this resume here. Edit. So go on down here to next. Now click on other and you can put your statement of interest right here. It's the same thing as a um a cover letter. Statement of interest is a cover letter. That's what it is. You know I have a I have a cover letter builder. Let me show it to you. Here, look at this. You should use my builder to write your statement of interest. It's right here. Free builders. Cover letter. I have an accomplishment builder too. There, there's the cover letter builder, which would be a statement of interest also. And you could say my relevant ex experience for the position includes one, two, three. I believe that I'd be an asset to your organization because one, two, three, and sign the name. You should use this and then copy and paste it into the additional information field. And that's what I would do with it. So glad you asked. So are you convinced that the builder would be a good idea? Now, another reason that the builder is better is that the HR people, you know, all of government likes their rules and regulations and compliance details, right? Every single thing you do with the government, there's a form to fill out and there's regulations to follow, right? Right. So if the government has posted an online builder that they ask you to use for your resume, I think that it's better and smarter to use their format instead of trying to be creative and come up with some, you know, private sector something that, you know, you just make up because that's what I see that's so sad when people tell me they've been searching for jobs for a long time with federal is I see resumes that are just, you know, not right. Here's another one, starting with the outline format. These are all my classes where I build the keywords. Here's uh, Air National Guard. This one is really cool. This job block right here, um, this particular block was for um, an IT person. Well, he was an electronics person, and the keywords here are very heavy for IT. So IT operating systems, transport IT specialist, computer networking, gateway. He was able to move into IT with this job block. Every every sample in here is a small paragraph. So this is this is my main point of teaching this class is the outline format and how beautiful it is in the builder, that you should use the builder, that you should have more than one resume in your builder. You can make one of them searchable, whichever one you like. Uh, the searchable system is not used heavily right now with USA Jobs, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, Kim writes here, um, I get concerned about keywords versus creative writing. For example, if they want a teacher, I use several words like teacher, trainer, mentor, educator. Is that a bad idea? It's a good idea, but if they say they want a teacher or they say they want instructor, then you should use the word instructor or teacher because that is what they want. You should use the words of the agency. And mentoring is really good. Educator is good. Yeah, you can use you can use those other words as well, but the real word is uh, teacher or instructor. So you don't have to get creative with your keywords. You can just make your keyword list. And the Federal Resume Guidebook will have samples of keyword lists in it. I think there is a chapter on it in here. Before and after samples. Oh, I do have keywords. There they are. There they are right there. I came up with outline format keywords for a bunch of samples. So you would get the idea. And using keywords to match the announcement, I show you how to do keywords in the book. The book can be ordered on my website um, ahead of time. 
I'm going to send you an email after this class is over. I have all of your emails for attending, and I'll tell you how to order the PDF of the book early, okay? Because um, I love the book. It's it's incredibly different from my fifth edition. This book is 220 pages long. Look, this chapter is called How Many Hats Do You Wear at Work? This is one of my lessons that I use when I teach my classes, and I get everybody to write down how many hats they wear at work. So for a teacher, the hats that you wear at work would be uh, teacher, curriculum development, uh, activities, uh, educator, advisor, a communicator, um, and then maybe a community relations or community educator, something like that, planner, right? That would be good. Planner would be good. Those are hats that you wear at work. And those become the all-cap keywords in your outline format. Okay, so our time is up. Uh, it is uh, 30 minutes now. Thank you, everybody, for attending the class. I will send you um, information about how to order the Federal Resume Guidebook. Um, but overall, mostly, I hope that you will use the builder in USA Jobs. I hope that you will use the outline format, keywords, accomplishments, and I hope that you like the uh, webinar. I would love to get some feedback from you on this webinar. Um, I'd like you to tell me what you learned and what was important. And I will probably keep teaching it, but I think I'm going to post this up on my website. So you might see this on one of my web pages somewhere so you can watch it again. This is general information that everybody needs to have if they're looking for a federal job. And um, yes, we do one-on-one -on -one interview coaching and training all the time. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a great 2016. I hope you all land a federal job with some of the tips that I was teaching you here today. And I hope you will get the book because it's going to help you even more. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye.